Alright Pistons fans, so in today's video, we need to talk about the big news of trading Saquon Nuboya and Jalil Okafor to the Brooklyn Nets for DeAndre Jordan and four second round picks along with five million dollars on the cap. So let's get into this man. So I personally feel like there's a lot of nuance to this deal that's not being talked about. There's a lot of good that's in this deal. There's a lot of bad in this deal. I feel like this deal is a mixed bag that's not really being talked about because what I've been seeing on social media is that people are either on the far right of this deal being positive or far left on this deal being negative. And I feel like there's somewhere in the middle. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of bad. There's a mixed bag in terms of this deal. So let's get into this man. So first off, I'm going to go on the positives of this deal and later in the video i'm going to get to the negative so the first positive in my personal opinion is getting rid of jaleel okafor if you're new to my channel you probably don't know this but if you have been watching me for months i've been advocating for the pistons to get rid of jaleel okafor for the longest amount of time now man before the draft during the draft after the draft free agency i've been wanting jaleel okafor going for the longest amounts of time and the reason why is because you look at this pistons team and you say before we signed kelly olenic he was behind mason plumley he was was behind Isaiah Stewart and he was just the body just sitting there not really adding much value you know he's not a Boban Marjanovic when he was on the team Jalil Okafor honestly in my personal opinion was just dead weight dead space didn't add much to the team just sitting on the bench at all and then this year picking up Luka Garza keeping Isaiah Stewart and then adding Kelly Olenek that's three guys who should have been ahead of him. If we decide, you know, I know right now that Luka Garza is on a two-way deal, but if we decide to put Luka Garza on the main roster, Luka Garza would have been ahead of him. We would have had Isaiah Stewart ahead of him, obviously, and then we would have had Kelly Olenek ahead of him, obviously. So, so Jaleel would have been behind three guys, so I didn't see a reason to keep him long-term, especially after we picked up Garza and after we signed Kelly Olenek. So, so I've been wanting Jaleel Okafor going for the longest amount of time, and I'm happy that he's finally gone. So that that is a positive in my personal opinion the next positive is the second round picks now i know second round picks are always hit or miss you never know when second round picks are going to be good you never know when second round picks are going to be bad you know some drafts are deep some drafts are not deep but when you look at the track record of troy weaver so far you know when his history so far with the detroit Pistons, and even when you look at the okc thunder when it comes to scouting second round talent he's been pretty good so far when it comes to scouting second round talent and especially if it's a good draft if it's deep when you can find someone like isaiah livers man in the draft or luca garza late in the draft or picking up Saban lee last year in the draft and then the guys in okc he has had his misses occasionally we understand this you know Dervita Servitas, that was a miss but he has had his positives and i'm happy that he will have more opportunity to pick up guys in the second round even if those guys don't end up becoming something you know i still want troy weaver to have the opportunity to have a hit or a miss draft pick mid to late in the second round so the second round picks are a positive in my opinion now the next thing that i'm going to talk about is second Nomboya being a hit or miss type of player you know i've been looking around people have been coming in my comment session after we did this deal yesterday and people were talking about you know they brought up spencer dinwiddie again they brought up chris middleton again you know players that we've given up on in the past and i understand it man i'm always against giving up on young players early you look at the la lakers you know they gave up on Lonzo Ball, they gave up on Brandon Ingram, all those guys, Julius Randle. You know, they got the championship. It worked out for them in the end, but just in general, I'm always against giving up on young players early because you never know what they can become. But at the same time, you can't ignore that sometimes when you give up on young players, it's for good reason. And when you look at this Pistons team, it's not like we always give up on guys and they become a Spencer Dinwiddie or a Chris Middleton. You look at someone like Stanley Johnson. We gave up on Stanley Johnson, didn't become anything. Henry Ellison, gave up on him, didn't become anything. Kyrie Thomas, Jordan Bone, we can go on and on. There are guys who we've given up on and they've become nothing. There are guys who we've given up on and have become NBA champions like Chris Middleton, okay? There's some guys who become something. There's some guys who don't become something. But you can't use it as a point to say, hey... Why are we giving up on Seku? Seku is about to become another Chris Middleton. No, stop using that argument because at the same time, we've had guys who we've given up on and they become Stanley Johnson, okay? So Seku, he can be a Stanley Johnson. He can end up becoming a Chris Middleton. Who knows? But I feel like you should not use that as an argument to, you know, down talk this deal because we don't know what Seku can become yet. Currently, right now, Seku... He has some potential there, you know, hasn't been given the right opportunity here in Detroit. He may be given more opportunity there in Brooklyn and he may become something. Who knows? But as of right now, we don't know that. And the player that he is right now, he's very raw and very unrefined. 
So that's my positive on this. The next positive that I want to mention is Luka Garza. There's potential now that Luka Garza will get more opportunity, more playing time on the Pistons this upcoming season. Obviously, I know that he's on a two-way deal right now, but with the moving of Jaleel Okafor, and we actually decided to waive DeAndre Jordan, with the moving of those guys, there is possibly opportunity for Luka Garza to get on this team. And who knows if Troy Weaver even decides to make another move to free up some more space for him, who knows? That may not happen. We may end up keeping the same roster that we have right now, but I do envision that Luka Garza will have potential to be on this roster this season. So that's a positive for me. I'm happy that Luka will possibly be getting a chance. And then my last positive thing about this is that Troy Weaver didn't believe in him. Troy Weaver from the jump didn't draft Saquon Naboya, and it's obvious that him and Dwayne Casey just didn't really believe in him. They didn't really give him the opportunity that he needed. We saw what Saquon said in that interview that was very cryptic that came out about a month ago talking about he didn't know his position on the team, he may or may not be traded, and he's traded now. So Troy didn't believe in him, Dwayne Casey didn't believe in him, the owner probably didn't believe in him. You know, I want the Pistons to be on the same page. I don't want our front office guys to be, you know, butting heads on these type of situations all the time. You know, it's good to have your opinions, you know, you don't want an echo chamber, but if guys in the front office, all of them don't want one guy, someone like Sekou, I want them to make that decision. I want them to be on the same page for the most part. Again, you don't want an echo chamber, but when it comes to Sekou, it's obvious, it's been known that the regime that we have right now with the Troy Weaver guys, they didn't believe in Sekou and they got him out of here. So I'm happy that they're on the same page. We have direction here in Detroit. So those are all the positives to this deal. Now let's talk about the negatives to this deal. So the first negative, well, I don't know how many people want to consider this a negative, but Killian Hayes, you know, we don't know the friendship, the true connection between those two, Killian Hayes and Saquon Naboya. We obviously know they know each other from France, but we don't know the true impact and the true, you know, friendship and bond that they have. They may be best friends. They may just be casual friends that post each other on social media on occasion. Who knows? But, you know, I do feel like this could be a negative to someone like Killian Hayes. He may be upset with the Pistons right now for trading Sekou, but this is a business. He needs to understand that these types of things happen, but this may be a negative to him. This may impact his morale a bit that we traded away his friend and Seiko Numboya. The next negative is DeAndre Jordan. It's because we traded for him and waived him immediately. So we basically got a guy for no reason. Well, not no reason, but you guys get the point. We waived him. He's not here long term on the Pistons. So it's not like we add him much value back in terms of a player coming to this team. The next negative is that the power four position is actually looking kind of weak right now. Now I know that we have Jeremy Grant and I know that we have Trey Lyles but when I'm talking about week I'm talking about you know looking forward in the future for the Pistons unless you want to move Isaiah Stewart right there unless you want to move Isaiah Livers right there we don't really have a solidified future power four right now I see Livers as more of a three maybe you want to put him at the four but he's really a three and then Isaiah Stewart he's more of a five so those guys aren't really built to play the, the power four position. And now we don't really have someone in the future to grow and develop right there. We have Jeremy Grant, we have Trey Lousa behind them. We don't really have someone in the pipeline right now to really come and fill that role. And you wanna put in Tyler Cook, you wanna bring him back, you wanna put in Dervita Servitas. I don't really think so. I feel like we're gonna have to go out there and find somebody in the future to become another developmental power four for the Detroit Pistons. That was Sekou, but now that he's gone, we need to find another developmental power four. And with those four second round picks, who knows, one of those picks could end up becoming the next Sekou developmental player for us. And then my last negative point is that again, for Sekou Novoya, hit or miss, as I mentioned earlier in the video, he could become something and he could not become something. It could be a really big negative if he becomes the next Chris Middleton, I understand that, or another Spencer Dinwiddie. That could be a big negative, but I also feel like it could be a positive if he doesn't become anything and we get four second round picks and $5 million out of this. So those are all my thoughts and opinions on this Seiko deal. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did a lot of research and put a lot of time and effort into this video. So make sure you guys go like this, go look in my description, make sure you guys go subscribe to my backup channel, like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Thank y'all for 3K and I'm out.